Your journey must start with an encounter with God. And you must desire to have an encounter with God. Everything that you do, you are mindful of the relationship you have with Him. If you cultivate His presence, your confidence will grow. Everyone is called. Everyone is called. You are watching Blessed School of Ministry with Pastor Kemi Mukwena. Coming up next on Blessed School of Ministry. So God is calling us to pursue true wealth, true wealth, true wealth. Because, because the pursuits of men is what the Apostle Paul called uncertain riches and certain riches. The reason why so many people can't serve God, so many people don't understand Christianity, is because they are looking at wrong things.
If you are a Christian and you desire to grow in your knowledge of God, in your relationship with Him, and be on fire for God, I want to invite you to enroll with our Blessed School of Ministry class of 2024. Registration is now open. The classes are held every Monday online and also physically. I tell you here we will teach you how to balance your ministry with business and also with your family. They are calling a message from that. Why? Because they, they were available. The Bible says, look for men that are full of the Holy Spirit. Why are you disqualifying yourself? What? David was never called. They saw a shepherd boy, but God said, this is my king. Register now and become empowered. You will discover the call of God in your life and your life will never be the same again. The information is on your screen. Grab your form and submit it now. Do not delay because the space is limited. I tell you, you will grow in your relationship with God. You will be on fire for God. And most importantly, you will fulfill the call of God upon your life. Register now and your life will never be the same again. Look forward to seeing you. Previously on Blessed School of Ministry. When you fellowship with the Lord, you are participating in who He is. You are sharing in who He is. You are part of who He is. And that's your first calling. Any Christian who gets saved and run wild and they do not submit to their first calling, that is where later on we hear stories about them. You cannot know how trustworthy He is until you experience Him personally. Personally. Your confidence in him, Hebrews 10, 35, do not fling away your confidence because there's a great recompense of reward. Where does it come from? Where does it come from? That place of fellowship. If you lack praises from people, the day they criticize you, your life is over. Finished. There are people who died because they were facing an opposition where their integrity is questioned. My integrity has been challenged before. And each time I never defend myself. I just say to my heart, keep looking, keep watching. Keep watching. A man who walks with God, just give him time. The whole world can criticize you and call you things and so on. Keep your eyes on Jesus. One day, one by one, they will say, no, we were wrong. We were wrong. Look at him keep rising. We were wrong. I've, I mean, I've seen all accusations. I was accused of cheating. I was accused. I was accused. And in the, in the cheating, my wife was the first to defend me to say, not my husband. They don't know my husband. This is a man of God. Hallelujah. Because I've lived before her and she sees my cultivation of my relationship with God and says, it's impossible for this man. You understand? I've been accused of stealing money. I've been accused of witchcraft. At some point, people were accusing me. They said, when they come to my office, they see blood on the walls. And I said, yeah, 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 there was blood but it's the blood of the lamb, hallelujah. That speaks better things, hallelujah. And I tell you, imagine if those kind of accusations find you weak. I was never moved by any of them, never. Firstly, I knew they were wrong. Secondly, I knew that they were after my anointing. They were after my calling. They were after my reputation and they could not touch any. And I said in my heart, I never told them, I just said in my heart, keep watching, keep watching, keep watching. Time. It's the power to separate. Hallelujah. And now all of them, they've changed their mind. Surely God is at work in the life of that young man. They still call me a young man. And I'm almost 50 years old. <laughs> Amen. So that place is the most powerful place, I tell you. The most important place. You ignore that place, you're going to have a problem. So God is calling us to pursue true wealth. True wealth. True wealth. Because, because the pursuits of men is what the Apostle Paul called uncertain riches. Uncertain riches. The reason why so many people can't serve God, so many people don't understand Christianity, is because they are looking at wrong things. Matthew, Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. I like the addition, added, 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 shall be given, added. You understand? That place, that place, that place of first calling. Seek first. I like the way the Amplified Classic Edition put it. It says, it says, and first and most importantly, aim at, aim and strive after 
his kingdom, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God. And he says, and all these things shall be given to you. All these things that the Gentiles are seeking after shall be given to you. But it says, keep your eyes on what is priority. Your place of first calling. He says, seek for true wealth. Do you know that true wealth, it's not defined in monetary value. It's just a portion of it, money. That's why here, this, this verse I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going to read. The next part, because um, I thought we are already on the next slide. Uh, Revelation, let me read it for you. Revelation 3, verse 18 to 19. It says, so I advise you to buy gold from me. God says, buy gold from me. Gold that has been purified by fire. Then you will be rich. Also buy white garments from me. So you will not be ashamed by your nakedness. An ointment for your eyes so that you will be able to see. I correct and discipline everyone I love. So be diligent and turn from your ignorance. Indifference means ignorance. So he says, I advise you to buy gold from me. How do you buy gold from him? How do you get the garments that he's talking about here? Eh? Buy white garments from me so that you will not be ashamed by your nakedness and ointment for your eyes. So he's showing us three things here. He says, buy gold, buy white garments, and buy ointment for your eyes. How do you define as true wealth? How do you define, what do you define as true wealth? True wealth is your knowledge of the living God. This is what the apostle Paul was looking after. When you know God, when you know God, David pursued the knowledge of the Lord more than he pursued wealth. He was saying, my relationship with you, I price it more than gold. You understand? You understand? When you have your relationship and you cultivate it by entering, you see, the more closer you get with the Lord, the more you become brighter and brighter. The more you, you win the war against sin because your war against sin will, will stand until, until your body is redeemed. And when we talk about the redemption of your bodies, we're talking about when your body is glorified. It's no longer carrying this, this, this body of sin. Do you know that when you get born again, your body does not get born again. Go read, go read um, um, Romans chapter 7 from verse, somewhere around verse 20, 21. The Apostle Paul talks about the power, a power that is working within his body. And that's the power of sin. But that power loses its thing. The more you stay in the presence of God, the more Jesus Christ becomes revealed to you, the more you become one with him, you begin to become whiter and white. You become more conscious of him more than being conscious of sin. That's why 1 John 1 verse 7 says, if you walk in the light as he is in the light, you have koinonia with one another, meaning you have fellowship with one another. And it says, and the blood of Christ his son cleanses you from all unrighteousness. But it starts by, if you walk in the light as he is in the light, you have communion. You have fellowship, you have participation, you have sharing in him. And it says, and the blood of Christ continually cleanses you. So when you, when you live naked and exposed before him, intentionally, by cultivating a consistent relationship with him, you are living in the light. Because you know that if you go out there and you do other things and so on, when you come into his presence, the devil will, will whisper to you, say, hey, you remember what we did yesterday? So you go into the presence of the Lord ashamed. That is why the scripture, Romans 8 says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. For those who are in Christ, it means these are the people that are led by the Holy Spirit. They are not led by their flesh. So people call, we quote this scripture, there is therefore now no condemnation. No, 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 no. When you have, when you have sin intentionally, when you practice sin, there is therefore condemnation. When you avail yourself, you, are now, you have now been delivered from the mud and you go throw yourself in the mud. You come out dirty, there is therefore now, there is, there is, there is condemnation. Yeah, because you practice sin. You live and choose to sin. You are not living open and transparent before God. And then you want to quote Romans. No, Romans 8 is not a scripture you quote to justify your sin. Romans 8 is a scripture you quote because you are led by the Holy Spirit. 
When it says there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ, it doesn't put a full stop. Only the NIV puts a full stop. But the interpretation of that is that I am no longer led by the flesh. I am led by the Spirit of God. I'm no longer led by the demands and the impulses of the flesh. I am led by the Spirit of God. You understand? There is therefore now no condemnation for those. Not no condemnation. Because I have said yes to Christ, I live in sin. There is therefore now no condemnation. No, there is condemnation. There is, no, there is condemnation because that condemnation maybe can push you to realizing that, you know what? I have lost my place of intimacy with God and change your mind. But if I'm going to quote scriptures incorrectly, wherever, I have a problem with you. I have a problem with you, honestly. Those who are not condemned are those who walk according to the dictates of the Spirit. That's why the Bible in, in Romans 8, 18 says, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit, if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you shall live. So by the Spirit of God, you are able to put to death the demands of the flesh. And how do you do that? Avail yourself to the Lord. Says the desire to be, to experience true wealth, which is God's presence. God's presence is true wealth. Because in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. That is better than money that you can have in your bank account, by far. Are you listening to me right now? So, and it says ointment. 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 Put it in your eyes. Listen, when you get into the presence of the Lord, you're going to see things which people don't see in their, in their natural strength. You're going to begin to see with the eye of the Spirit. Of course, there is an eye of the Spirit. Jesus talks about this in the book of Matthew chapter 6. I think it's in verse 22. It says the eye, the lamp of the eye. The lamp of the body, I mean to say, is the eye. It says the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is single, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, the whole body will be full of darkness. And it says, if the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? It says, it's about how you see. It's about your eyes, how you see. What do you see? What is your eyes leading you to? The lamp of the body is the eye. So if your eye is defiled, it looks at worthless things, it affects your body. And by the body, it talks about your life. So how do you see life? Do you see with the eyes of the flesh or do you see with the eyes of the spirit? When you see with the eyes of the spirit, it will bring light to your body. But when you see with the eyes of the flesh, it will bring darkness to your body. So here in the verse that you are reading, Jesus says, by myself, to me, from me, so that you can see clearly, so that you can have that eye, that see by God, not the eye that see by the flesh. Look at Abraham and Lot. When they were separating, the Bible says, Lord lifted up his eyes and he saw the plains of Sodom, that they were well watered like the garden of the Lord. And he saw by the flesh and he went to a wrong direction. Guess what? When he came out of Sodom, that man was rock bottom. He did not even, he entered with his wife. He got out without a wife. She turned into a pillar of salt because of the eye. Messed up his life. Your eye will mess up your life. That's why the Bible talks about the pride of life. The last of the eye. The last of the eye. What do you see? What is your eyes showing you? How do you perceive life? If you see life from your physical eyes, they're going to defile your whole body. That's why Jesus says, buy gold from me. Buy white garments from me. Buy eyesal from me so that you can see. Clearly. Hallelujah. And then he says, I correct and discipline everyone I love. So be diligent and turn away from your ignorance. How do you do that? You, show me a parent who can discipline a child when the child does not avail themselves to the parent. So when you avail yourself to God, listen to me. When you avail yourself to God, God himself is going to discipline you, correct you, and instruct you in private when nobody is there. You ignore God, I'm going to do it. And if I do it, you probably will not like it and it may hurt you. And then you leave Christ because of me. 
and get me in trouble with God. You, 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 CD, you. So you must desire the correction of God. So with me, something interesting happened. In my entire growth in my local church, I don't remember a time where my apostle looked at me in the eye and rebuked me. I don't remember a time. But guess what? He did that so much in my dream. In my dream, the man would mesmerize me like big time. And one day I asked him, actually, uh, every time I have these dreams, I would tell Pastor Ma. So there is a time where he, 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 the Lord spoke to him we were in a conference somewhere. Uh, in, we were in PE, in a seven-day conference. You see this seven-day conference, where I get them from. Don't think I started them. It's where I come from. So when we have a wealth transfer conference for seven days, it's where I come from. So we had those seven days. And there, we have a service in the morning, we have a service in the afternoon, we have a service in the evening. And my wife and I will attend all of them. All of them. We would, I don't remember one time saying, let's just rest this afternoon. No, for seven days we'll attend each and every one. But we are yeah. We never miss them. Why? Because God was preparing us for something. Yeah. So we went in Bloomfontein in, in PE. He sends me a message. He said, the Lord spoke to me that when we go back for six months, every Monday we'll come to your house and we're going to teach you certain things that the Lord wants you to know and to prepare you for the future. I just want to pray for you right now. If you're not born again, you've not made Jesus the Lord of your life, just believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for you and make this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. I thank you that I'm born again. My name is written in the book of life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you made that prayer, you are born again. You're my brother, you're my sister. I will see you in heaven. God bless you. Love you so much. May you experience the goodness of the Lord every moment of every day. See you again next time. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, please pray about becoming a partner with us. We are a ministry that focuses strictly on winning souls. We are doing so much right now to win souls. There are so many empty chairs in heaven that still needs to be filled and your partnership will enable us to remain on this channel that you are watching. So if you wanna be a partner with us, please send us your email address. Send us also your name and your surname on the information that is on the screen right now. And we'll send you our partnership package, which includes my two books titled Unveiling Jesus in the Tithe, as well as Understanding Covenant and Inheritance. We will also send you our daily devotion on a daily basis. And more than that, we will pray for you every day. And you will be a partaker of everything that God is doing in our ministry. Let's fill all these empty chairs that are in heaven. You and I can do it before Jesus Christ returns. God bless you. If you are a Christian and you desire to grow in your knowledge of God, in your relationship with Him, and be on fire for God, I want to invite you to enroll with our Blessed School of Ministry class of 2024. Registration is now open. The classes are held every Monday online and also physically. I tell you here we will teach you how to balance your ministry with business and also with your family. They are calling a message from that. Why? Because they, they were available. The Bible says, look for men that are full of the Holy Spirit. Why are you disqualifying yourself? What? David was never called. They saw a shepherd boy, but God said, this is my king. 
register now and become empowered. You will discover the call of God in your life and your life will never be the same again. The information is on your screen. Grab your form and submit it now. Do not delay because the space is limited. I tell you, you will grow in your relationship with God. You will be on fire for God and most importantly, you will fulfill the call of God upon your life. Register now and your life will never be the same again. Look forward to seeing you.